just mentioned the Federal Reserve in the US is raising interest rates there. Professor Wolfers didn't want to speculate, but, but other experts believe it's a matter of time until Australian rates start creeping upwards too, maybe later this year. That will compound the pressure on many home buyers, especially those who are so stretched they've opted for interest only loans as the only affordable way into the housing market. Those people are already set to face much higher mortgage repayments thanks to a crackdown by Australia's banking regulator. It wants more borrowers to pay down principal and interest. Pat McGrath takes a look at where things could head. I'm a licensed buyers agent. So I provide independent and unbiased advice to clients to help them buy properties that are high performing, they're investment grade and they outperform the market. Property is Miriam Sandcooler's life. I have my own property portfolio, I have multiple properties within that portfolio which allows me to ride the market depending on how the market's performing. Like many savvy investors, she uses interest only mortgages to keep a lid on her loan repayments. But there's just one catch. The interest-only period usually lasts for just five years. Recently I've had some of those loans come to fruition where I've gone to refinance them and they've had to be converted to principal and interest. I've been able to wear that. However, I'm certain there are plenty of people in the marketplace who might struggle once that happens to them. Australia's property boom has been accompanied by a massive spike in the number of home buyers signing up for interest only loans. But it's no longer just investors using them. First home buyers are joining the interest only club as they scramble to get into the property market. Last year, the proportion of borrowers with interest only mortgages hit 25%. That triggered fears of a ticking debt bomb. We've got a huge chunk of loans out there that are interest only. They're typically a five year or so period. And when people have to start paying back the principal on those, uh, that's going to send their repayments up a lot and many people might not be able to afford them. Economist Richard Holden believes rising house prices are behind the spike in demand for interest only loans. And the banks have been more than happy to hand them out. Banks have lent in a fairly imprudent way. They've lent too much. People have been encouraged to borrow uh, too much, partially by the market and partially by this just general mania about property in Australia. Uh, and that's led to a very risky situation. In March last year, the banking regulator APRA decided it was time to intervene to avoid mass defaults in the future. It ordered the banks to slash the volume of interest-only mortgages to below 30% of new loans. APRA's actions uh, could very well lead to a nice, smooth diversification of the home loan books of the major lenders. On the other hand, they could kind of burst this bubble uh, of, of interest-only loans. And so that that's the real concern, is that they cause, if you like, a, a sort of a hard landing in the home loan market. APRA's crackdown appears to be working. Interest-only mortgages now account for less than a quarter of new loans, down from a high of 40%. That's my husband's parents. Lynn Wishart has an interest-only loan that switches to principal and interest next year. She wants to extend the interest-only period, but now she has doubts her bank will let her. I can only imagine that there will be quite a number of people in maybe a similar situation to us who won't have the excess cash to be able to afford a principal and interest loan. Lynn is studying teaching and her husband works full time. Two years ago, her bank gave her the loan to buy a home for a family member. That family member has since moved out and the rent from her new tenant only just covers the mortgage repayments. We don't go out much. We don't buy any new clothes. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we live from pay to pay. Um, and if there were any change whatsoever, we're just we couldn't do it, we would have to sell. Lynn's loan is with the Bank of Melbourne, a subsidiary of Westpac. I want to move on to this issue around uh, interest only uh, mortgages and so on. At a parliamentary yeah, hearing last year, Westpac Chief, Chief Executive Brian Hartzer was asked how many of his bank's mortgages were interest only. Interest only is about 50. 50%. 50%. So let's just be really clear on this. So basically, 
Half of all people who have a mortgage with Westpac are not paying back any principal, they're just paying interest. <coughs> That's not the way I would put it. We don't get in the, in the public and in the economics community visibility into what banks are doing on their own loan books. So when Brian Hartzer uh, told the parliamentary committee that more than half his home loan book at Westpac was uh, interest only, I found that pretty stunning and, and a little bit shocking to be honest. Westpac's lending practices are now being scrutinised in court. The corporate regulator ASIC has accused the bank of irresponsible lending, alleging that over a four-year period it failed to properly assess whether home buyers could meet their repayments. Now, Lynn Wishart is questioning whether the bank should have given her a loan. If you look purely just at the figures, I think you could say that they were irresponsible. Westpac declined 730's request for an interview, but in a statement said it always assesses a borrower's capacity to meet their repayments, even if interest rates rise. The Australian Bankers Association, the voice for Australia's big banks, also declined our request for an interview. So we couldn't ask about concerns that Australia's banking sector and the economy could be in for a rough ride when more home buyers are forced to repay the principal on their loans. We might get out of it okay, everything might come to a kind of smooth, a smooth landing, but there's a real risk of um, some kind of US style meltdown. The US mortgage market over a decade or so ago had a really high percentage of what were called adjustable rate mortgages, and these were also five year loans. The expectation was you'd be able to refinance them and get another adjustable rate mortgage at a, at a decent interest rate. When everyone tried to do that at once and the markets couldn't bear it, uh, people got into a lot of financial distress. Miriam Sankul is warning fellow investors and owner-occupiers to brace for bigger repayments or get ready to sell. Well, they could run into a lot of strife. I mean, a number of them could be forced to have to sell properties and ideally they want to do that uh, in advance of it becoming a distressed sale. Very scary for a lot of people. Very scary.